Jonathan Gavoni here of DraftExpress.com here in Boise, Idaho at the D-League Showcase. Sitting here with Mikkel Gladness, uh, one of the top shot blockers in college basketball history. Actually holds the shot blocking record that was previously owned by David Robinson. Mikkel, how's, uh, how's Boise treating you so far? Um, well, a couple. we had a couple games. Um, didn't do so well in the first game, but as well as the, the rest of the team, we had a little a little trip in LA and we came straight here. But I mean, we bounced back today, and um, not seeing as much playing time as I would like, but still developing and just waiting my turn to show what I can do. So, two years out of college now, how do you feel things have gone for you as far as your as far as your career, your development? Uh, you're putting on weight, uh, you know, all that stuff. How do you think it's going? Um, as far as my my development is, it's a lot better. Um, I had pretty much no offensive game when I came out of high out of college, and um, just defensively, I've become more of a total defensive player rather than just a side blocker. So um, you came out of the SWAC, and um, was there a stigma coming out of the draft? I mean, did, did, did you get workouts? Did you get the kind of uh, the kind of looks that you thought you deserved coming out of college? Um, I got a couple work. I got a few workouts, but. Um, I think coming out of the SWAC, people were like, let me see what he's going to do type thing. Like, is he really a shot blocker? Can he really block, shot, block shots against the, the bigger, tougher defenders? I mean, big, tougher offenders. Um, but, yeah, I had, I had a proof point. Uh, I got, I got a, like I said, I got a few, but I feel like I should got some, a, little, a, little, a couple more. But, I mean, it's, it's all in the past now. How tough is it not making much money at all? But still, not only, only playing nine minutes a game, is that a little bit disappointing for you? Uh, how, do you how do you take that? Um, like I said, just, it's just, just waiting my turn. You know, I'm playing behind Joey Dorsey, which is a, a, great, a great player. Um, I get a lot of reps in practice just going against him. And, and then coming out here, I mean, of course, I, I like to play more. But as of right now, I'm just just wait my turn. I, I know I'll get it, and when I get it, just make the most of it. So Rio Grande is a unique team in the D League because they're the only team that their front office is actually run by an NBA team, which is Houston Rockets. Other teams are owned by D League team uh, by NBA teams, but they're actually running your front office. How does that play out on a day to day basis? The cooperation with the Houston Rockets. Oh man, it's it's so much different. Um, even though I haven't been on a D League team before, and I don't, I don't know the situations of the other D League teams, but just going seeing training camp and you see all these Rockets uh, people around you almost every day. I'm, I'm sure all, all the other teams don't have that. The people, the staff that we have, especially Coach Finch, and just I mean, of course, Joey, and just run their offense, just like play for play. I mean, it's it's amazing. In terms of the Rockets are best known, their GM, Daryl Morey, is best known for the fact that he's an innovator in terms of his use of statistical analysis. Is that something that comes into play in the D-League as well for you guys? Oh yeah, they, they send us so many uh, stat sheets of like box outs, blow buys, everything. Like they break down every single thing that you that you do in the game, um, no matter how many minutes you play. And then also we have um, Coach McKeskey and he, he goes through and he grades us as far as the team on defensively and also as far as like the, the blow buys and the box outs and the block shots and help side defense. So I mean it's constantly constantly being charted so you I mean you have to be on your P's and Q's. How much have you learned about basketball from you know being around that, that kind of environment? Um just every time I make a mistake they're always I mean they always on me to do. I mean, they, they tell me what I do, what I've done wrong, and you just hey, you have to clean it up. I mean, that's that's a, a, the good part about it because you always have somebody there teach you. Whether it's a coach, or it's whether it's another player, it's always somebody there, and so that's that's the great part about it. You guys do a lot of work on film. Oh yeah, I mean, the hours of film, like cause, because they're always saying, run, "Can you run that back? Can you run that back?" So we see exactly what we made a mistake on, and if you have a a disagreement, you can actually discuss that. It's, it's not like it's like a dictatorship where one person says something and it's, that's all. So your head coach, Chris Finch, also has a little bit of a unique story because he's the head coach of the British national team. He coached in Europe at a very high level. He's a, he's a pretty well-known guy. What's that been like playing for him? Um, you, can, you can feel some of his European style as far as um, 
sometimes the practice schedule during training camp, you can feel some of that. But also, he has is integrated like, the, of course, the players that he has into the system that the Rockets want him to run, and he's he's done a pretty good job too. So I would, if you had asked me, what is the main thing holding you back from be, being a, a, a very high level player? Probably be your frame, your strength. How can you put more weight on your frame? Is that something have you put a lot of strength on since you graduated from college? Or are you working more on that? I'm still working on that. I mean, it's, it's an ongoing process. Again, with the with being with the Rockets, uh, our, tra our trainer has actually contacted the strength and nutritionist from the Rockets and. Getting on, getting on that process even more this year. I mean, I've constantly been working on it, so it's that that probably is one of the toughest things that I've had to deal with. Do you think that getting a call up is a realistic possibility at this point? Um, right now, no. I, I'm, I'll just be honest. I'm just pretty much just working on my game and seeing what I can do to help the Vipers win right now. Um, if if that comes in the future, so be it. But right now, it's more development for me and for just to help my team right now, really. So what is um, you know the light? A lot of most guys, the light at the end of the tunnel for them is getting that call up. What gets you out of bed each and every morning? Getting better. Um, I mean, of course the call up would be nice, but in, at the end of the day, if I don't get the call up, that's I mean that's that's not going that's not going to dampen my spirits because even after the season, the the mini camps, the the um, summer leagues, and everything like that, that's 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 still something we can look forward to. You played in Holland last year. Uh, what was that experience like? Um, I think they helped me more, as, like guarding people on the perimeter, because I played more the the, um, the power forward last year instead of the center, and just like I said, more offensively because I was I was forced to handle the ball a little bit more and just guard guard and, and play against other people that were a little bit smaller or maybe a little bit quicker than me. So I had to do other things that I did in college. Would you be opposed to going back to playing in Europe? Um. Right now, I'm, I'm I so I like this this lifestyle and it's just the D League so much. Um, no, but then again, I want to try still try my hand a little bit more in, in the D League. So I don't know. As of right now, I don't know. How does a player survive on thirteen thousand dollars a year? <laughs> well, if if I hadn't gone overseas last year, that 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 would really be a problem. But I mean. My my parents always told me live within my means. But so I mean, you get thirteen thousand dollars, you just you do what you can with it. I mean, you save some, you spend some, but you you spend wisely, and that's I mean that's it's really paid off for me. Mikael, I want to thank you so much for your time. You've been great, and uh, best of luck rest of the season. Okay.